Here's the latest this morning. Growing EV demand concerns are forcing automakers to scale back production, with some making a pivot to hybrid vehicles. In China, shares of BYD falling in Hong Kong trading after the EV maker's earnings missed estimates amid aggressive price cuts. Competitor Volkswagen saying it expects to fall behind in China. Quote, along with our value over volume growth strategy, we are deliberately prepared to give up market share in order to find a sound compromise between margins and volume. For more, Pablo de C, Volkswagen Group of America president and CEO, joins us now. Pablo, good to see you. Good morning. Thank you for coming into the studio. I know it's an important couple of days for you and the team here in New York City. I just want to reflect on the events of yesterday in Baltimore, important hub for automakers. Can you walk us through the potential disruptions for you, the team, and the company? Yeah, first of all, regarding yesterday, uh, our heart goes to the families. Yeah, uh, it's quite unfortunate that everybody's putting back, look at, looking at this. Um, from a business point of view, we are on the side of the sea level. So, you know, when the, the ships come into Baltimore, we're not going to be affected by this event. Obviously, we're going to have some disruption because of the trucks, but it's not going to be as disruptive as other automakers. Supply certainly hasn't been the problem in this industry. Unfortunately, it's been demand. Can you walk us through where you're seeing things weaken, where you're seeing things strengthen, and whether you're able to lean into what's happening with hybrids and the demand for it in America? Uh, absolutely. So let me start talking about the industry. Uh, February year to date, the demand is very strong as an industry. The, the North American market, which is Canada, US and Mexico, grew 8% February year to date versus last year. And we grew 21%. So we're tripling the growth of the market. But still, 8% is quite strong. And what we're seeing, the data from March, is still strong. Having said that, uh, the EV has flattened. The curve remains around 7.5%, 8% of the total industry. But we as BW, we still have 12% of our sales are in the ID4, in the electric vehicle space. So we're still having higher growth than the average market. Do you expect to ramp it up, though, more slowly and maybe put a greater emphasis on hybrids? Are you starting to sort of sow the seeds for that right now because you have a couple of uh, years or potentially months to really get that up and running? Yeah, so our factory is highly localized in the U.S., and we have both combustion engines and electric vehicles in Chattanooga, in Tennessee. And we're the only foreign automaker that qualifies for the $7,500 credit for the consumer, which means that we're localized within the region. So that gives us our flexibility. Going forward, I think the pace of growth will be slower, but we'll still grow in the EV space. And other powertrains will be a good alternative for the consumers. So the consumers will be able to choose electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, hybrids and combustion engines. How important was that subsidy to you to not only build a factory, but also just in terms of your decision of the product mix to sell? Well, first, I think the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, is a great piece of legislation for the U.S. because this is transforming the industrial base of the U.S. So you see all these new factories and battery factories being built in the U.S. over the next three or four years. So the benefit is not only for us, but also for the consumer. You know, by the fact that we're localizing and we're bringing all the jobs of Volkswagen and also the suppliers, you know, we create an ecosystem that provides more jobs here and then the consumer gets a $7,500 credit. If Trump were to come back in power, though, he can rewrite those Treasury laws, which makes a subsidy, which could make the subsidy basically impossible to get. How are you thinking about that kind of impact when all this money has been put towards the EV market? Yeah, so we have a long-term vision on these topics. I mean, we know that and we believe we remain committed to the EV strategy in the long term and the pace will depend on the consumer. Now, is it possible that the rules will change? It's possible, uh, but he, he would need a vast majority uh, in the Congress and the Senate to change these laws. And also, when you look at the map where all the factories are being built, they're not built only in states that are Democratic or Republican. They're being built all over the US. I think, you know, in the interest of jobs, and, and growth in technology, I think it would be wise to maintain this long-term vision. Do you think it would be wise to wait until after the election before you make decisions about your manufacturing footprint in this country? Uh, I don't think so. And I'll give you an example. Uh, these are not only words. We decided to localize the ID4 way before the Inflation Reduction Act, which goes back to your question, right? So we believe so much in the transition to electric vehicles and in localizing our footprint in the U.S. that we made decisions before and after that we're going to continue to localize. One push over the last year or so by this president, by this White House, is to push and support 
union workers. You mentioned Chattanooga. There's, at that plant, there's going to be a vote on whether the workers join UAW, that specific union. Can you walk us through what that could do to your cost base? Yeah, first of all, we respect the freedom of our workers to choose how they're represented. Having said that, we're constantly talking to our workers on how to improve you know, the working conditions, the salaries and the benefits. Uh, it will be up to them how they want to be represented uh, in the future. So we will respect that. And the cost base, would it, you just assume it would increase off the back of that? I'm not so sure. I mean, we have a very competitive cost base, competitive in terms of the employees. Uh, we have wages around $23, $23 an hour, which are compatible to Michigan with a lower cost of living. So um, we will see.